All right. Well, so let's do this. I, I've made a few notes here um, that I think are, are there's things that came to mind. And then I, after I uh, mention these to you, then uh, it may very well be that you have something for us as well. And I would like to write that down. Uh, and that is, what did you, what did you learn through this experience? What would you remember about uh, going through the threat of Hurricane Harvey and just the little bit that we did experience that would help you in the event that you went through something potentially catastrophic or, in fact, catastrophic? And so these are a little bit random, but they're, but they're worth noting. And I think the first thing is to thank the Lord. Thank the Lord in everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Let's pray right now before we start doing this portion. And then uh, we'll hear, make a few comments and then we'll all pray together. Father, thank you so much tonight for, for being here. I, I am so glad that this morning we decided we would meet tonight in spite of the fact that the power went off and looked like we might have difficulty getting back. What a great blessing to be here. I know that there are many in our church family who would like to be here if they had already come back. Um, to be able to enjoy this service together. But I'm glad that those of us who could be here are here. And love the prayers reports. Thank you so much because those are not just what we experienced. But those are real praises to you for your provision during this time. We're so thankful, Father. Uh, and certainly tonight we're going to pray for those that we know that are in harm's way or that have suffered more than we have. But now, Father, we simply ask you to guide our thoughts and thinking through um, this brief sermon so that we are comforted and instructed by what we've endured. For we ask you to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So the, th the first thing, the first thing that, that I have here on the list is to thank the Lord. And everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And there are a lot to be thankful for. And you've mentioned it tonight in your, in your praises. To be thankful for protection. Uh, that seems to be the principal thing. And to be thankful for friends. So that you don't sense that you're having to go through this by yourself. You actually have somebody that would call you and comfort you with, with, the, um, with the knowledge that they're praying for you. And then something that's also very important. And that's to, to thank God for the peace. Uh, to, to go through something like this. You know, uh, when Ann is here and Lizzie and Ori and Emma are here and we're all the way up in Idaho and can't get to the house to do all that you would do in emergency preparation, can't be with Maureen, for instance, in Randy's case, uh, you, you, the tendency is in our makeup, in our frame, is to start stressing, to start thinking, to start imagining, and that kind of thing. And while we were there, it was really funny, one, the, our, the theme of our conference, pastor's conference there in uh, Treasure Valley Baptist Church was priorities. And so those were the sessions in the morning, the priorities of various things. And then the men that were there, some of them actually preached in the evening. And one of the men preached about this need for peace in the midst of a problem. And I thought about Pastor Keck when he was here. And taught us a Sunday school lesson. And he says, what you want to do is get to that place of peace in the midst of that problem. Before you ever get to a proclamation, you've got to find that peace, even though the problem may not be solved. So Randy and I were giggling to each other as we were driving from San Antonio, heading south. And nobody else in Texas was. <laughs> yeah, we started laughing like that's easy for Brother Murphy to get up there and talk about having peace in a in a bad situation he ain't never been through no hurricane you know <laughs> so we laugh about that a little bit but the but the truth of the matter is there is a peace uh, that comes over these things and and here's where it comes from you know you know because you've been through it I know because I've been through it even though we didn't suffer really anything um your imagination took you to places that weren't, that weren't good, <laughs> right? Some of you to a greater degree than others. And, and the Bible says, casting down imaginations 
and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. What happens when those imaginations start running, they feed feelings in your flesh. And the feelings in your flesh start running your imaginations. In other words, it's, it's redounding. The feeling, I'm worried about something and it starts to get you thinking. The thinking gets you start feeling and the thing just gets bigger. And sometimes it gets bigger quick. It's kind of like your imaginations go from category one to category two. <laughs> and from category two to category three. And before long, they're category four. And they've got a lot of wind in them. <laughs> and here's the deal. The Lord said, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, for he trusteth in thee. And really and truly, the thing that, we, that, that I needed to experience, Ann said, you were a little crabby this morning. Indeed. And, uh, and you know, even though this thing had passed, there was just, there's just the, the stress of it all. And you don't even want your mind to go there. The, the, what I learned is to be thankful and to keep, to keep your mind stayed on Jesus Christ. Well, you left home and went to another place, but Jesus Christ went with you. Amen. Because he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we need to, once again, magnify Jesus Christ and not those imaginations that come with it. Because they're all associated with worry and you don't feel better and you don't feel peace. So those things really need to be cast down. We need to really think about that. I'll, I'll tell you another thing. And I, I mentioned it this morning, but, but I'll, I'll say it again. Don't be quick to judge. Don't be quick to judge. It's easy for our minds to go there, but I suppose right now... Some very godly people are suffering through nervous times. They may not experience any damage. They may not even get flooded. And some of them are getting flooded. They really are. But they're not, they're not worse than you are. They're not less godly, less righteous. They're not getting it because they deserve it. It's what happens with storms. And so it's always important for us not to be quick to judge and say, oh, well, we dodged that, you know, God's really taking good care of us. He did, but he's got to take care of them too. So we've got to be careful about that. And another thing is, get back to your, your routine just as quick as you possibly can. Get back to your routine just as quick as you possibly can. I like, Marie, I like your testimony. You said, I looked over there at my husband. I'm ready to leave town and get away from this thing. And he's over there reading his Bible. That's really good. You know, prayer is part of your, your routine. Bible reading is part of your routine. And you don't need to break those off in the midst of a potential crisis. They said about Douglas MacArthur, and I suppose that it's right. I saw it, you know, I see it in illustration books. That when he got news that Pearl Harbor had been bombed, the first thing that he did was picked up his Bible and read it for 15 minutes before he did anything else. I don't know if that's true or not. If it is so, I tell you, that's really the right thing to do. Let me, let me stay with the priorities of my Christian spiritual life, and then we'll work it from there. We'll work it from there. It was kind of funny. Uh, Maureen gave the testimony happy about Randy coming home. Uh, I, indeed. And when we were driving, you know, what do you think you're going to do after that? And I said to Randy, I said, my objective is get you back to your wife. <laughs> we'll pick it up from there. Well, we thought we were going to go further. We didn't. And she was expecting us to stay anyway. And I just thank God for that. You don't have to think out too far. If you do, you get away from your anchor. And your anchor is your spiritual life that is associated with your Bible and with your prayer. And, and so get back to that just as quick as you possibly can. Uh, Romans chapter 12. I know these are a little bit random, but that's okay. And I've been quoting scripture for you that are very familiar to you. But Romans chapter 12, look at verse 15. Romans chapter 12, look at verse 15. Just some thoughts about these things. Um, Romans chapter 12, verse 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice. And tonight we're rejoicing, right? Uh, I, I really, really have enjoyed the reports of God's protection and provision and help. 
Rejoice with them that do rejoice. And we giggled and laughed about some of these and how the Lord took care of us. It's nice to be able to do that right now. And he says then, weep with them that weep. And after all the dust settles on this, we're going to have some good friends. Some in the ministry, some that are personal friends of yours in various places who are going to have suffered a great deal through this. And so he says, as long you're rejoicing, and I am too, that we escape this. But there are some that have gone through a real tragedy, and it is good to weep with them that weep. When we stopped in Referio on the way, you know, the Bellows really had their mind made up about getting to Bayside. They've got a place that they have right on the Copano Bay that they've used for the family, but also for many church-related functions. They've been very gracious with what God's given them. And they knew they wanted to get those windows sealed so no more rain would come inside the house. And they had that on them. But, you know, they, were, they seemed genuinely grateful that somebody, because they can't call anybody. They don't have any phone service over there. I was genuinely grateful that somebody would stop by to check on them, make sure they're all right and everything's going. And uh, it's just a relief. But you know what that is? In a sense, it's weeping with those that weep because they know somebody cares. And so we really, really want to be conscious of that. Uh, another thing to remember is, uh, is what Pam said in her testimony. You want to value your possessions in heaven a lot more than you value your possessions on earth. Isn't it amazing? Uh, we make all the, uh, and, and rightly so, we need to be prepared for these things. You have a house, you have a shelter, God's given that to you. You need to do the best you possibly can to protect it. But the truth of the matter is, what? This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. You might get out of here quicker than you thought. If you're in a little 24 by 24 house, you might be, whoosh, you get to heaven in a, like, like Elijah did in a whirlwind. <laughs> you know, just, it might get quick. But the truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is, listen, listen, we do protect the things that we invest in. And rightly so. But I'm thankful tonight that many of you, and we as a church, invest heavily in the things of heaven. There's a lot of souls in heaven that are there because of the work of missionaries and the missionaries are there because of the prayers and, and, and gifts of the saints at the church here. And I tell you what, listen, all kinds of things can ravage our possessions here. You can have a fire. You can have a storm. Uh, you can have uh, an earthquake. Not so much here. Uh, bad things can happen down here. You can have a theft or a burglary. A uh, lot of bad things. But do you know something? All these things, and we talked about some of them this morning, that just seem to increase in their intensity and in the frequency as we get closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That adversary, who is partly responsible for this because he's the one that tempted Adam and Eve, and he is the deceiver, that adversary cannot touch your mansion in heaven. It never needs to be boarded up. It never needs to be secured. It doesn't need a burglar alarm. It doesn't need emergency lighting. That mansion in heaven is secure because of him. And that's really our value. We may someday encounter something where we lose our possessions here. Well, Job did and he said, so be it. And, uh, and recognized that one day he would see the Lord face to face in his body. And I'll tell you something, we never want to lose sight of that truth, no matter the circumstances here. And finally, I would say this. I would say this. Assess your emergency preparations. Assess your emergency preparations. What do I mean by that? Um, you know, there's, go through the Bible and uh, the horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Somebody got that horse ready. And there were times when David had to use those things. Um, you, you and I have recognized how quickly you go from, you know, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. How quickly you go from everything's fine to, oh my goodness, what is just now getting ready to happen? And so if you think in terms of, uh, w having gone through this and what you would do next time. Is there anybody here, anybody here that would raise their hand right now and say, if I ever go through this next time, I'm gonna. Is there anybody, just raise your hand if you said that. 
Now, if I ever go through this again, next time I'm going to. All right, if, if you thought uh, about that, next time I'm going to, do it this week. Or if everybody else is doing it this week, doing it next week. <laughs> you know, when you can. Because the t here's the temptation. Whew, we dodged a bullet there. And then about six months from, months from now, you forget. And then it comes up again and you're like, man, I sure wish I had. Go do it now while it's fresh on your mind. Safety is of the Lord, but the horse is prepared against the day of battle. And you're not going to have much luck finding a horse in town if the battle starts and you don't have one. <laughs> you got to have that guy ahead of time. Okay. And so, and it's not wrong to do that as we, as we saw Noah prepared an ark and it, and use that. Because he was trusting the Lord uh, to save his house. And it's important to be able to do those things. I have heard a number of reports. One, we heard when we went to Referio. We boarded up the, house, the, the windows that we thought were the most likely to break. If we had boarded up the rest of them, we would have had no problems at all. You know what you do? You board them up anyway. You say, well, I didn't even need to do that. Good, take them down. What have you lost? You see what I'm saying? And, and because you've got those preparations, then it takes us back kind of to that second point. You're not as nervous and anxious when the time comes because you've already made your preparations. Now, those are just some of the things that came to mind that relate somewhat with the scripture and also with our experience that, that I want to remember to be thankful, to not be quick to judge, to let those imaginations be cast down because we're looking to the Lord and trusting Him for our peace. Get back to that routine just as quick as possible or don't leave it. Weep with those that weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Remember, these are not the valuable possessions, although they do have value. The valuable possessions are in heaven. And assess your emergency preparations. Just If you, if you thought about something you would do, go ahead and do it now while it's fresh on your mind.